This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly.
It's a shame then that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not over. You can still save these two. You can stop the programme before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, 